In today's video, I am very excited to be going over our updated winter forecast for the winter of 2025 to 2026. And it is a rather big update. We're going to be updating the temperatures, the precipitation, the snowfall, and the overall forecast. So we're going to be really, really deep diving into it today. And before we dive into things, be sure to comment your location down below like the video, subscribe, and I will be giving you a custom forecast for your location as long as you do all three of those things. Now, first things first, we're going to be taking a look here at the temperature forecast. You might notice that we've updated our color tables to now include uh, five colors as opposed to three, and I think it's a big upgrade. We're starting out with the first layer of above normal temperatures out west and this is a pretty easy call this is probably one of the more confident things in this entire video because we have really really warm waters offshore of this area in the eastern pacific that is going to be really just blown right on shore uh, by these winds the ocean temperatures definitely influence those surface air temperatures and that's all going to move on shore and probably almost certainly bring much milder conditions to a lot of areas out west. Now, as we get into our second shade of these above normal temperatures, you can see that we're mostly separated here by the Rockies. The Rockies are going to shield a lot of the central states and eastern states from the majority of this more mild, uh, warmer air. We also expect troughing out east. I don't want to get too ahead of myself as we will dive into that in a little bit, but that is going to be a big factor, and it always is. We even have a third shade here, which isn't as meaningful as it used to be because now we have five. So this doesn't mean that we are, you know, through the roof confident in this, although we are. And I'll, I'll go ahead and add the fourth layer. Spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, we actually are very confident in this. Now, probably more of you are more excited about the cooler temperatures than the warmer temperatures. So let's go ahead and dive into that. And we can see our first layer of below normal temperatures is going to mostly encompass the entirety of the plains and everywhere eastward from there all the way to the east coast. No huge surprise. When we get these warm uh, patterns out west, we a lot of the time we'll see cooler air uh, kind of wrapping around that ridge. So the jet stream is going to ridge in the west and then trough in the east here. And we call this a positive PNA pattern. We saw this a lot last winter. Uh, I do expect that this could be an even stronger effect this upcoming winter. Uh, it's a very classic pattern, and I do expect this to, again, be in full swing effect. As we just kind of dive deeper into some more of the layers, we have our second layer here, which is just a little bit further eastward, obviously. Uh, just kind of growing confidence for some of these areas. We even have the third layer here, the purple one, uh, which is going to include most of the Midwest, a lot of the more northern areas of the deep south states and then obviously the ohio valley great lakes mid-atlantic northeast here as well we even much like the temperatures have our fourth layer of confidence we're very confident in this western warm area and nine times out of ten this western warm area uh will bring those again, cooler than normal conditions to the east. So it makes sense to be equally confident in this effect as we are in this effect. Uh, so that is really the overall pattern that we expect temperature-wise to take place. And I say temperature-wise because now we're going to dive into the precipitation, which is our second factor. We're looking at the below average precipitation first things first. And we are in a neutral end zone. Oftentimes, especially when we're in a cooler neutral ENSO. So we're bordering between what is in between an El Nino and La Nina, which you've probably heard both of those terms. Uh, we're in between there and we're more on the side of La Nina. So we're either going to be in a weak La Nina or neutral ENSO, it appears. Oftentimes when you're in these cooler phases of what we call the ENSO, which stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation, you're going to see drier conditions in the Southwest. Uh, we really see this type of a storm track kind of shut down for the most part. Uh, what we expect a lot more of is a more dominant northern-based jet stream uh, to bring storms through the areas experiencing the cooler conditions. I do suspect that sometimes we'll have some of these storms moving offshore becoming more 
uh, nor'easter-like for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Looking at the second layer here, we can see that the southwest is going to be our more confident area for this because, again, this jet stream, when it gets cooler, could dive down even further south and bring some storms through this area. I expect it to be average to slightly below average as far as precipitation, so there will still be many storms moving through, just not quite as much as we're used to on an average winter. Now, we do have the third layer as well for this very far southwest area, Southern California, Southern Nevada, into Arizona and New Mexico. And this is just classic, you know, neutral and so weak La Nina stuff. Uh, kind of a no-brainer here. Looking at the above average precipitation, uh, we can see that the northwest, because of that more La Nina effect, will have some storms coming on shore. I think that a lot of these will meet up with the jet stream and move along a lot of your... Uh, central and eastern states much like this and there will be huge deviations with every single storm obviously but that is going to be kind of your average track i do also expect a lot of clipper systems to move through and then follow a very similar track from the central states so the big split here is between the northwest and more east of the rockies just to the east of the rockies that's where those two storm tracks will originate from and then from that point they will follow a very very similar track that is why we expect areas east of that connection to experience even further above normal precipitation for a lot of the northern plains, upper Midwest, Great Lakes, northeast. These areas are going to see both storm tracks bringing impacts, and I expect even further above normal precipitation because of that. We do have our most confident area, which is going to be for a lot of these northern plains, upper Midwest, Great Lakes locations, where I expect they could see a massive uh, snowy winter up in those areas. Not so much. I think there's good chances for huge snowstorms, but I think the theme for these areas would be much more of a uh, quantity over quality, if that makes sense. So much more smaller to medium snowstorms put together is going to overall bring more snowfall to these areas than maybe a handful of much larger snowstorms for areas like the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. With all that being said, now we know what the temperatures are expected to be, what the precipitation is expected to be, and now we will talk about the snowfall. Following suit, we now have five colors for each above and below here with the snowfall chance forecast. And the reason why we differentiate this from, as opposed to snowfall anomalies, we go with snowfall chance because this is such a tricky thing to forecast. Even if we know where more precipitation will be and more cold air, we do not know how that's going to line up from situation to situation. So it is much trickier to forecast and it's going to be easier for us to show you where there is going to be a much better chance of snowfall compared to normal and where there will be a much better chance of below average snowfall. Uh, but again, if things line up differently, timing wise, uh, it can really, really go outside of what you would think should happen uh, based on the precipitation and temperatures. But the chance is going to be uh, more based on those things. So we do see a below average chance of snowfall in the southwest, obviously with above normal temperatures, below average precipitation. It's easy to see why this area would be seeing much less chances of snowfall than what they're typically used to. Of course, the Sierra Nevada and Southern Rockies will see snowfall. With all that being said, let's go ahead and add the second layer, uh, which is just going to be within the same area. Of course, where we're just more confident in it. And even with the third shade here, uh, again, pretty easy to be confident in this with the above average temperatures, below average precipitation, pretty clear. Above average snowfall chances will be very easy to find for most of the United States, the Northwest, mostly the mountainous areas, because with the mountains, uh, the temperatures won't play as much of a role. If your average temperature is 20 degrees as a high, let's say, and in an above average temperature winter, your average temperature then comes out to let let's say even like 28 degrees, which would be a huge, hugely above average temperature winter. That's still below freezing as a high temperature. So it is not going to make a difference snowfall wise. Um, now the precipitation in these Northern areas with very low averages is going to play almost the entirety of the role in how much snowfall you will end up seeing. If there's less precipitation, that's just less snowfall because almost all of your precipitation was going to be snowfall. If that makes sense. The more southern areas, it is actually going to be more based on temperature. So the precipitation, while it matters, obviously, it would, it would help to have above average precipitation. If it's not cooler than normal, then there was hardly a chance 
regardless of precipitation. So I hope that makes sense with the differences from north to south. And then more of the central areas, it's going to be a 50-50 mix between the two as far as which is more impactful or not. Again, it will all come down to timing at the end of the day, uh, but we're just talking about chances here. So let's go ahead and add our second layer where we are seeing uh, a cutoff basically from the Rockies. Once again, east of the Rockies, we do feel pretty confident that most areas will have a better chance of seeing above average snowfall. We do have that third shade as well where there's a really good shot that many different areas in here will see uh, good amounts of snowfall. We do have the fourth though because I did want to separate the two areas. Even though there's cooler temperatures here and it's going to give them a good chance of seeing um, good chances of snowfall in areas even where typically there's not one. Last year we saw snowfall in some of these uh, very far south areas and I think this is another winter where there might be opportunities for something like that to happen. They are incredibly rare but... In winters like this, that is the type of winter where it does happen. You might also be wondering, I forgot to mention this, why areas that historically almost have never seen snowfall, and some of them probably have never even seen snowfall, and that's because it's a snowfall chance, right? So if there's a 1 in 1,000 chance, maybe you're seeing a 1 in 750 chance of seeing snowfall in these areas. So I'm not saying that southern Florida and southern Texas are going to see snowfall. It's just whatever your chance is, it is higher. Uh, even if that chance is nearly impossible. Well, I forgot to get into why the northern areas here are in the further above average, and that is because they are much cooler on average. I expect them to be cooler than normal even, and we expect above average precipitation. So it's kind of the perfect setup for above normal snowfall in these areas. Let's dive into the very exciting overall forecast, and there has been some uh, pretty big updates on this as well. Let's start out in the northwest, much milder than normal. Uh, warmer temperatures, average to slightly above average precipitation. A lot of these areas that aren't high elevation are going to probably see less opportunities for snowfall. Further to your south, very warm and dry compared to typical for a lot of these southeast areas. Kind of speaks for itself. Average snowfall, especially, um, you know, I wish I could break down every little area, but Mostly the northern Rockies, I expect average to maybe even slightly above average snowfall. I think for some of these very far southern Rockies, there's a good chance it might end up being below average snowfall. Uh, below average to average, I would say. Just to the east for areas in Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, these areas. Cold and snowy. Uh, we do expect that the jet stream is likely going to be dipping around your region. A lot of times lows might be latched onto that, and especially if they go to your south, uh, that might mean a lot of snowfall in these areas. I think that that could be a pretty big effect. Polar vortex likely uh, going to be a really decent possibility to even probability this winter. I think if my temperature forecast verifies that likely that means we saw one or two uh, pretty major polar vortex events for a lot of these northern plains and upper Midwest locations. To our southeast, we've changed this area quite a bit. We had it as a simple Arctic blast, and that's still the case. I wouldn't really feel the need to change that other than I am feeling more and more confident that this area is going to see those frequent, again, smaller to medium snowstorms and be much cooler than normal. This might be one of the snowiest areas compared to normal in the entire uh, winter here in the entire United States. The red areas around the Great Lakes is lake effect. Uh, we have had a warmer start to the summer. A lot of these sea surface temperatures were much higher than normal, but what's unfolded with late August into September has likely cooled these waters down quite a bit. It's still something we're going to have to monitor. I don't feel too confident in either direction with the Great Lakes yet. It's going to definitely depend on how cold this fall time is. Uh, further to the south, winter battle zone, we do this every single year. This is the area that typically, when they do see winter storms, uh, they're typically going to feature a lot of different types of precipitation. It's not going to be pure snow oftentimes. Expect ice, sleet, rainfall at times, snowfall, messy snowstorms. These can create a whole lot of different impacts. Keep that in mind. Much colder and snow chances for the deeper south. We mentioned this. Uh, and this is kind of a bold take. Not really when you hear me break it down. Probably somebody that just sees this map will think that I'm crazy. Uh, but again, these things do happen. They are quite rare, but they do happen. A lot of these more northern areas in that blue area, maybe it's once every five to ten years. Areas further south in there, again, maybe once every thousand years. Uh, regardless, I think that this is one of those years where the chances are uh, relatively high to see some 
weird deeper south snowfall events much like last winter so that is my current thoughts it will be much cooler than normal um so it just depends on the timing like we've mentioned multiple times throughout the video for the more appalachian mountain range areas here we do expect huge snowstorms to be a possibility uh when we see these the jet stream kind of set up perfectly where there's that ridge and trough pattern if it sets up with that jet stream perfectly offshore you can see low pressure centers kind of ride along that again it might be coming from the gulf i do expect a lot of times it might be a little flatter than that and moving uh, more from the middle of the united states and then offshore from that point regardless uh, this type of storm track would create big time snowfall opportunities in these areas and i'm even putting us on blizzard watch uh, i think that this is a year uh, where we could see some big time uh, east coast snowstorms depending on how things line up especially with the current uh, trajectory of what I'm seeing from model guidance and as well as just historical guidance that I'm looking into. I feel like all of the pressure systems out in the Atlantic are setting up to be pretty good for these big time snowstorms in the East Coast. So this might be the year, guys. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time. Of course, I've said it about 10 times in this video, it will come down to timing, but there's a good chance uh, compared to what is typical, let's say. So we'll be watching. Many exciting videos coming up soon. We're going to do our annual uh, average snowfall video. We're going to do our snowfall forecast video coming up soon, as well as many other seasonal and monthly outlooks, and then our daily videos. So be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.